Number two, Siri. Huge part of the user experience in iOS. Now, Siri services over two billion requests a week from customers, and there's so many things that you can ask Siri. But now, in iOS 10, Siri's going to be able to do so much more because we're opening up Siri to developers. Now you'll be able to ask Siri things like, send a WeChat to Nancy saying I'll be five minutes late, and Siri can summon up the WeChat UI right inside of the Siri environment. Now, of course, Siri, because it understands the domains of things like messaging, it allows you to say things in so many different ways. I could have said, WeChat Nancy, that I'll be five minutes late, or I need to send a message to Nancy via WeChat saying I'll be five minutes late. And I could do that in all sorts of different languages. But because now in iOS 10, we have an intense API, it allows Siri to take on that part of the work and lets the extension do what it does best, like messaging. And so now we support messaging with apps like Slack and WhatsApp and, of course, WeChat. You can do things like ride booking in Siri with services like Uber, Lyft, and Didi in China. Photo search for th in apps like IM, Shutterfly, and Pinterest. And you can start, st uh, pause, and stop your workouts in apps like Map My Run, Runtastic, and Runkeeper. And even do payments to send money to friends with things like number 26, Square Cash, and Alipay in China. And do VoIP calling through apps like Cisco Spark, Vonage, and Skype. And it works great in the car as well, because with CarPlay, you can now safely send your uh, messages as well as make VoIP calls all inside the CarPlay environment with your favorite apps. And that's a quick update on Siri. Thank you, Tim. So I am really excited to talk with you about watchOS and show you some of what's ahead. Now, people who are using Apple Watch love it, particularly for quick glances at information and quick interactions. And our top focus is performance.